Player you can hear the Italiano sound Hey Giuseppe, what do you say? Mamma mia! Buongiorno from Monteregioni, Italy, where I have come to an absolutely stunning courtyard in a medieval fort to pick up the new GTC4 Lusso T with Schmee 150. There have been worse ways to start a Monday. Without further ado, let's hop in this beautiful car and see what it's all about. The first thing for me, and I can't imagine what it's like for both of you guys spending time around the FF, is upon starting it up and even, you know, the first depression of a throttle, hearing what sounds like a California tea. It does sound tea. very yeah. California tea. <laughs> Last night in the um, presentation, they were, you know, telling us all those stats and figures and torque curves and things like that. And one of the things that I did pick up on was how they were pitching this as having more lower down response than the B12 and I can confirm this thing is nippy down low <laughs> and it's agile too fabulous it is you know it, it flows it, you would never think you are in a car this size um, and also I'm not sure if it's the four-wheel steer that's helping disguise its mass too but it feels light it feels quite a light car you know I'm comparing it with the F12 you're not sat as far back either so even though this is a front engine car every time I get in the F12 I'm, I look down that bonnet and think you could land an aeroplane on that thing it's so ridiculous but this it doesn't feel up like that I feel more on the nose yeah. and when we um, lifted the bonnet up earlier it's amazing how far back they've pushed that yeah, engine yeah. it really is a, a sort of mid front mounted but the other thing is still got things like carbon ceramics it's still got like it's, it's yeah. loaded up like a Ferrari sports car ship yeah the sound is, is a really interesting one because obviously yeah Tim and I have been in the FF a lot recently and for you it must be weird you, you get used to the the V12 sound and yeah. this feels very much like an FF still but with a completely different soundtrack it's almost an which is so odd right? it's so strange because it's 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 completely different the noise you know yeah. twin turbocharged V8 yeah. significantly more muted than let's than a naturally aspirated V12 yes like the NA V12 when you get up towards the top end of the rev range is just screaming sublime isn't it um, yeah but to use a V12 you have to be almost I mean they, they their words Ferrari's words an automotive connoisseur because you need to yeah. be getting the most out of it driving up towards the top of the rev range yes um, and playing with the, the driving style whereas this is much more a case of you can jump in it just drive it which is interesting yet because they're pitching this as the driver's version they're pitching this as the person that wants a more sporty experience mm -hmm. it's a funny one isn't it which yeah. brings me back around to are they doing a very good job of disguising the fact they need to launch this rather than the benefits of a V8R <laughs> that, is lighter and yeah. that is a very interesting <laughs> point oh, ah there's another one <laughs> The, uh, another thing is the, the price point in the UK, for example. Yes. This car is £36,000 cheaper than the V12. Now that, that sounds a huge amount, and it is, but in the realms of Ferrari buyers and the way True. that they spec these cars... <laughs> You're putting 60 grand of options on a car, do you really care? Literally, I mean, you know, that sounds stupid, but that is before options. So by the time you spec one of these up, you're not too far away from a V12. Now I know you've well, got to then the, put spec on top of the they, V12. They did, they did make the point that the base spec on this is yes. identical to the V12 and the options are all exactly the same. So yeah. whatever you would have spent on the V12, you spend on the V8 as well. So that's why I'm thinking this is probably more of a market specific car rather than a mm, I can see that. Than a sort of purist specific car. Speaking of purist, we've got to get this panda out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> taking our 
our time on this slow bit of the journey through this rather tranquil town. I'm gonna to take the time to show you a little bit about the new passenger side display. Now in uh, the F12, it was only a display to pretty much scare the passenger as to how fast you were going. You couldn't really interact with it so much. But on this one, the passenger can actually control stuff. So if the driver doesn't want to take his eyes off the road and change the uh, soundtrack or play with the sat-nav, the passenger is able to interact with it right here. Swipe, turn list, all sorts of things. Not that, as Tim mentioned quite rightly earlier, not that the main screen is too far away for you to interact with, but they've gone and put two touch screens here. But the main thing is that the passenger side display is actually interactive and works rather than just passive. Also, when uh, Tim adjusts the Manatino, like so, you can see it change on the passenger side in real time. Anyway, we just arrived to our lunch stop. And I think uh, Tim's gonna go off and uh, you're gonna do some more filming and uh, I'm gonna indulge on some fine Italian <laughs> chow. This is where it comes around to the biggest difference is the, the territory you're in, in mm -hmm. terms of the tax bracket, the, the emissions bracket that the V12 versus the V8 falls into. Yeah, could Cross be a complete difference. game changer. Yeah, they're both top whack. So at least for the UK, it doesn't make any sense. For China, it could double the price of your car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you have to think about it. Which, China is one of the fastest growing markets for supercars, and I reckon that's probably the biggest incentive for this model. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they'll maintain the V12s uh, naturally aspirated, or if they'll go... I mean, will we see a, a hybrid in the likes of your daily, like this, or the next F12? What I wouldn't want is a, a V8 turbo F12. No. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, Don't you uh, think, will there, will there be a supercars for the V8? I hope not. Unless it, and if they do, it, that solidifies what we're talking about here. It's yeah. totally for a different market. Yeah. It, would, it would be the, the 708. Yeah. 700 yeah. volts yeah. per V8. Yeah. 708. Super fast. Seven seven yeah. Seven yeah. Seven yeah. Super fast. Fairly fast. fast. Seven yeah. eight. <laughs> <laughs> Embracing the Giuseppe mood <laughs> when in Italy. Hey, uh, the most flamboyant gear shift uh, in the land. <laughs> so there's one thing, well, in fact, there's several things that Ferrari do very well, and both of these things are immediately apparent upon planting your right foot. Now, the gear shifts in these are fabulous. So back home, my, I guess, daily driver is an RS6. And for all of its wondrous characters and daily usability, I'm still crying out for a gearbox that is as good as this in a daily application. These you know, boxes are typically reserved for a sportier driving environment and driving feel. And God, when you use it, it is absolutely rapid. And it does really slam those gears home. Now, unfortunately for me, it isn't mated to an engine which is exotic enough to really get my heart throbbing or, or as my F12 would do, literally get goosebumps on your neck. But that's probably not the end of the world because that ultimately isn't what this car is about. It is a more daily practical car. 
but where it makes up for that and in terms of the usability of it on a day-to-day -day basis and particularly around slower environments like towns or you know slower tight and twisty country roads is the amount of low down torque it's got now this is third gear 3000 rpm there's a surge of it there's a surge of torque and you know for all of its 610 horsepower and for everything that I missed in a sort of higher revving, naturally aspirated engine. In the real world, day-to-day -day usability, which this car is for, you're gonna be more thankful for that low-end torque, for sure. I mean, just coming out of that roundabout, it's, it can fly out effortlessly. The other thing is just how dynamic it is as a result of the four-wheel steer basically gives you a lot more confidence upon turning and just tighter twisty turns. Now in this particular car when you mate that transmission with that torque and the four wheel steer what you're getting is a driving experience that doesn't look like quite frankly it should come from a car of this size. Let's check this out. Let's do the shift. Look how fast that is. Absolutely instant and you know that's because ultimately while this is a practical car it's developed by a company that in its very core is all about a sportier drive it has to have that inherent sports car DNA okay it's probably not as practical as it could be space in the back it, it's more of a two plus two it's a it is a four-seater and you can easily fit four people in but I don't think you'd want to do a really long journey uh, in the back there it's more for taking your friends and family to the pub okay it does have a lot more practicality than take my f12 and i think as a daily proposition it's very very nice however me personally i'd still opt for the v12 and this comes down to one word let's go for two words soul and emotion i'm not taking anything away from this engine it's fantastic but when I'm buying a Ferrari, I, I want it to just be so visceral and full of energy that when I plant that foot, you almost brace yourself for the sensory impact. And this engine really isn't doing it for me. As Ben said earlier, it's like the neighbors playing your favorite soundtrack next door. You can hear it, but you're not quite getting the full effect. And I think that for all of this thing's merit, I can't help but think that it was developed for market demands rather than customer demands. And what I mean by that is, it's not that the market is necessarily crying out for a thumping V8, it's that due to emissions that we're gonna unfortunately have to downsize and make something which is more available to markets where taxes will just well, quite frankly hit you in the ass anyway guys uh, that was a, a brief overview of my first experience in uh, any GTC4 it just so happens that I've driven the uh, V8 first hopefully I'll get to drive the V12 soon and uh, yeah I'll be there to take you away from that journey as always thanks for watching see you next time ciao